Good evening, Spray Wash Academy. I'll give it a few seconds here, and we're going to talk about some specialty coatings and how to clean some specialty coatings and uh, how to even address and look at and those kinds of things. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit this evening as I go ahead and get some things set up here. All righty then. All right. So before I get started here, I just want to talk a little bit about um, reminding y'all that the huge convention is coming up. But uh, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about the huge convention. We're not going to talk about the huge convention. We're going to talk about specialty coatings and how to clean special co specialty coatings, how to sell cleaning specialty coatings, that kind of stuff. When you go out to certain jobs, you get this... Uh, you know, you, you come across a product that you've really never seen before, never dealt with before. We're going to talk a little bit about how we're going to identify those products and then how we're going to move forward with not only cleaning the product, but um, knowing how to sell the cleaning of the product. Well, we have no idea maybe even what it is sometimes. So uh, Steady Flow Power Wash. Hey, back at you. Um, Williams Washing, good evening, good evening back at you. Uh, cool, always great content. Thank you. Bodylessness, is that what I said? <laughs> Boldiness. <laughs> Anyhow. All right, so let's get into this a little bit. Specialty coatings, that's what this is going to be all about, right? Um, and it can be like a stone-coated roof. It could be, um, you know, like a stone-coated galvanized roofing system, which is like that really thin uh, metal roofing, galvanized metal roofing that ha that might have different colors to it, but is uh, got all the little stones impregnated on it. It's got the aluminum or the the asphalt over it, and then the stones inside of it, that kind of a thing. Um, really, a, a roof that you don't want to walk on, you don't want to do that kind of thing. So, how do you deal with that type of roofing? That's what we're going to cover. Same thing with if it's like a uh, uh, an elastomeric coating or uh, just some type of a coating that you don't even know what that coating is. How do you clean it? That's kind of what we're going to go over. How do you sell cleaning it when you have no idea what it is, right? So one of the first things that I highly recommend, and it's something that has worked extremely effectively for me, and that is honesty, okay? I, I know I say it all the time, and you, you know sometimes people probably get tired of hearing it, but it's true. Honesty sells. And the problem that you run into sometimes is you don't, you don't even know what it is. So how are you going to be honest with the customer when you have no idea even what the product is that you're talking about, right? So the you have to find out what that coating is or what that product is, or you have to ask the homeowner. So let's get past that. Let's figure out how to do that, right? So one of the ways that I approach this is very simply just saying um, to the homeowner, I ask them, do you know what this it what what the man who the manufacturer of this product is? Do you know who made this roofing? Do you know who the builder was? Do you all those kinds of questions? And this is going to work whether it's um, residential, commercial, or industrial. Especially if you get into the commercial or industrial coatings and things, it's it's better to ask. And here's why: I am going to outsell my competitors by asking. The questions that I'm going to ask, the, the drive that I'm going to push, look, they just want to get the thing clean, but they also don't want to void warranties. They don't want problems. They don't want this. They don't want that. They want a good quality job, but they don't want problems or damage or, vo you know, voided warranties, any of that sort of thing. So if I ask them very pointed and specific questions, and those pointed and specific questions are, who is the manufacturer? You know, the reason being is because once I know who the manufacturer is, I can contact the manufacturer for their cleaning recommendations. We're going to talk about that too, because a lot of times you're going to run into the situation where they're going to just flat say, I don't know who the manufacturer is. Okay, great. So now how do we deal with and address that? Everything here that we do is pointed towards a direction for them. Okay. Because sometimes when you start going and you say, you know, who's the manufacturer of this system? And they say, let me back up a little bit. I'm going to give you an exact example. This is something that just happened with my old company. This is something we just did. And 
So I asked who the manufacturer of this roofing product was. Turns out it was a company called Boral. And it were it was a Boral roof. So anyhow, we contacted the manufacturers of Boral. And they were very uh, pointed in how you were to do it, okay? They don't want anybody walking on their, on their system at all um, because it's a very fragile, easily dented system, okay? Um, and so then they went into... Um, you can use a very mild bleach uh, and uh, bleach and water solution. They, they did not, they specifically did not say soap. So I brought to them, can we add soap? No, it's a bleach and water solution. That's it. Okay. So great. And then they were at, now, mind you, in their technical bulletin, it didn't even say rinse. Okay. Had nothing to do with that. So what we did was we approached the customer and we said, look, a 2% solution, which is what they're saying, isn't even going to, isn't going to clean this roof. However, what they're not saying is that we can't, you know, they're not telling us to rinse the roof. My point in this is being honest with the customer and explaining what Boral said to do, we were able to come up with a solution for her. Okay. So I said, look, we've got experience with these coatings and sometimes there's a problem. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go over here on the left side of the home and we will do a, a test area in this area. We'll let it sit. We'll come back two days later. We'll spray because the roof was so bad that I knew that there's no way a single application was going to do it. I asked Boral if we could do multiple applications. They said yes. Okay. So boom, there you go. So my point in this was that by going to the manufacturer and them saying, yes, yeah, a 2% solution. Great. We were able to do that. We did multiple applications over um, a couple of different times. So we applied, we, we let it, you know, we left, we, we, you know, we rinsed, but we let the rain come, pick away at it some more, then we reapplied, we rinsed, we let the rain come, pick it. So, um, and it actually came out really good. But what do we do if the manufacturer says, don't use any bleach, okay? What if they say, use simple green? What if they say, use a brush and simple green on our product. This is how you do it. Okay. Now, what do you do? Because now you're in a situation where you're forced to um, either walk away or come up with a solution for them. Okay. Those of you that know me know I'm not a walk away kind of guy. The reason being is because if every contractor, if you walk up to a job and you say, I don't want that job. I don't want that job. I don't want that job. Guess how many guess what the other contractors are doing? They're coming up saying the same thing. I don't want that job. And if everybody's saying, I don't want that job, then the guy that says, I want that job is the one that's going to get more money for it. He's going to get paid for it, right? <clears throat> uh, what does this one say? Hopefully you got good money on that one with all the back and forth stuff. Yes, absolutely. You charge for it. 100%. You have to. That's my point here. Okay. A lot of people will say what? Run, Forrest, run, run, run. No, we got paid good money for going back on that job a couple of times over. I got paid for my phone calls. I got paid for my guys going out twice. You know, I think they went out there three times. Actually, it ended up being we made so many trips out there because she kept adding on to the job. We made good money off of it. So that actually the new owner made good money out of it. But hey, again, part of my point here is that by using what the manufacturer is saying to do, OK, now let's let's again, let's back that up and let's say that the manufacturer says mild detergent, simple green brush and water. And then that's it. Right. So let's say that that's the example. Now, a lot of guys are going to say, run, Forrest, run. Don't do that. And you could not do that. Right. Or you could say, look, Mr. Homeowner or Mr. Building Manager or whatever the case may be. We can absolutely get this clean for you. Um, we can do the soap, brush, and water. Um, this job here, if we were to use like our normal product, would probably take us a day and a half to do or one day to do. And, you know, your cost would be, you know, $2,200. Um, however, we'll go ahead and follow this manufacturer's process, and it's going to cost you $17,462.26. The mental part of that kicks in then, and they're like, uh, wait a minute, how much? $17,000. Yeah. If we got to follow the manufacturer's process. Okay. So you've done a couple things. You've, you've given them, Hey, we are willing to do it the manufacturer's way, but I'm going to tell you there's a better way, but we can't be liable if 
we do it other than the way the manufacturer says. Okay, so I'm pitching to you that it's the right way to do it this way because that's what the manufacturer says, but it's going to cost you $17,000. However, if we do it this way, and, my, and I have good experience with this or I have no experience with this, I don't know what the outcome is going to be, always be honest with your customers. But now you can point them in that direction to say, I will do it the way the manufacturer says, but here's the price. It comes with an, a super cost not just a cost, but a super cost if they're saying no bleach, because bleach is the, the effective way to do that. But you got to keep in mind that some of these coatings, you can, you can pretty much strip the coating off if you're not careful. If you use too hot of a sauce or just the bleach alone can strip that, that, that sauce off. So first of all, always offer to do a test spot if you're going to step away from what the manufacturer says so that you are, um, you can be careful with what you do. Now, I'm going to tell you that sometimes you do a test spot and it comes out great, but the end solution of doing it against the manufacturer's recommendations is not a good thing. So we did one and uh, we sprayed, we, we, we did a test area. We did a test area with a pretty hot solution too. And everything was great. So we went ahead and we sprayed an area and guess what? The coating started coming off. So we had to deal with that. Okay. My point is this, that you can, you, you offer these things up as a solution to the problem if the manufacturer says do it this way, but you've got to be clear. You've got to discuss with them that the manufacturer says do it this way, and it might be better to go that direction wholeheartedly, but this is the cost. Now, I also said that this is going to help me outsell my competitors, and how is it going to help me outsell my competitor? Well, it, it's actually a, a pretty simple thing. I can either talk myself out of a job or talk myself into a job. I can either outsell my competitor or I can outsell myself, to be honest with you, right? Because sometimes they don't want to hear the truth or once they know the truth, they're just like, man, I, I don't want to make that decision, right? If you've got that guy that's, he's just a, he's a manager of a location or he's a the, the property manager, he just doesn't want to make the decision and he, oh, I don't want to make that decision, right? You go giving him all this information that he doesn't want to make the decision on, you may lose the job. And then the next contractor comes in and says, oh, yeah, I'll go for it. I don't care. And they spray and they either screw it up or they don't screw it up. They either have insurance, they don't have insurance. So you can lose jobs that way. But guess what? It's a job I didn't want anyhow, right? If I'm going to risk my company for your job, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. And it shouldn't make sense to you to be doing things like that. Okay. So either number one, get, get paid your value. That's what, um, sorry, I don't know who this is because it's just saying Facebook user. Hopefully you got good money on that one for the back and forth. Absolutely. You have to charge to be able to do these things. And if they don't want to pay it, they're not your customer anyhow, right? We've discussed that before in this whole realm of things. Okay. Unless you're just super hungry, which you still shouldn't be doing things that are just that you don't know what you're doing. So I just had this happen uh, uh, yesterday, day before yesterday. Um, somebody had contacted me about a specialty metal roofing. It looked like a copper roof, but it wasn't a copper roof. It just looked like, you know, it's one of them looks like a, a copper roof kind of things, but it wasn't. So and the question was, well, how do I approach this? Again, the way you approach that is you go directly to this. This I don't even think that the building was all that old. Um, and so I, I suggest, look, you go back and you find out who the manufacturer is, right? Once you know who the manufacturer is, then you can find out what it is that is their recommended process, okay? Make sure I, I catch my stuff here. Uh, we had the same thing. We just uh, we went out and looked at a, at a fake slate roof. And so uh, now we've got to get the, you know, who it is that, that the manufacturer is to find out what they say. But then we also brought a piece back to the shop that we found on the uh, on the uh, on the ground somewhere. Right. Um, so we found a piece of, on the ground. We were able to take it and, and I dipped it in a uh, pretty hot solution. It, it, it's probably a 50-50 mix that was in a, a bucket for like brick mix type stuff. 
So I, I sprayed it in there and, uh, or I, I put it in there and I actually dunked it in there and let it sit there to see if it would disintegrate it, do anything with it. Um, Cause sometimes on those fake slates, they've got, um, they're, they're very hard. Some of them are really easy to clean. Some of them aren't so easy to clean. Some of them it's the, uh, you know, you, the, they've got some fiberglass hairs that can show through and that kind of thing. So you want to be careful on all these different coatings, but again, going back to it, it's just a matter of making sure that you explain to the customer exactly what it is that you want to do and go back to who it, who the manufacturer is. Without that, then you have to give them the information of, look, we don't know who the manufacturer is. You don't know who the manufacturer is. This is where I always go back to the best piece of advice I can ever give anybody. And I mean this. And I've those of you that know me, you know I've said it dozens of times. And that is, it's not my fault. What I mean by that is that it's not my fault that I let the roof get that dirty. It's not my fault that I, I allowed the siding to get that bad. It's not my fault that I allowed the concrete to get that bad. Now I have to come up with a, a, a solution to fix it, right? So this is my solution to fix it. I don't know who the manufacturer is. And so this is what it's going to take to get it done, in my opinion. But since I don't know who that manufacturer is, we don't have the recommendation from the manufacturer. This is the process that I'm going to use. And I can't be responsible for what's going to happen to this because it's an unknown coding. It's an unknown item. It's an unknown thing. Okay. Unless they can specifically tell you who it is that um, created that product or who it is that made that product or or whatever that is, okay? Uh, Facebook user, I hate the way that this thing comes out. Ray, we're gonna have to do something about this. Just saying that. Uh, what exactly is an, let me see here. What exactly is an elastomeric roof, Doug? It's not a roof, it's a coating, an elastomeric uh, coating. Like a, a, it's a coating. How about that? How about we just go with it's a coating? Um, and, so they have several different types, actually, and they've got, uh, you know, different colors and all kinds of stuff that they can put. Most of it's, um, I think they put it mainly over like a, some of, some of it has its own, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Can't think. Um, but a lot of times they'll put it over foam, and it, I think some of them, they actually even have a foam that they put in with that. But anyhow, there's different types out there, different types of coatings. It's not just about, about the elastomerics or the... Um, What's the other one that somebody else just put in here? Uh, bah, bah, bah. The thermoplastic type roofs, right? It's not just about these. It's about any type of roof system that you run into. It's not even about roof systems. It might be about an exterior um, system. It might even be about an EFS. It might be about uh, just any type of facade that you come across or any type of soffit or just different item that you're not used to cleaning. Doesn't matter if it's on a roof, doesn't matter if it's on the ground, doesn't matter if it's on the wall. These are things that you can use to help you, number one, outsell your competition or outsell yourself if, if it's something that, hey, I really don't want the job anyhow. And I want to make sure I do it right. I don't want to screw anything up, right? Because that's where a lot of the, the problems, in my opinion, come in at is doing things that you don't know what you're doing or that you don't know who the manufacturer is, you have to have a way to deal with that. So quick recap, and I'm going to be out of here a little bit early today. Um, look, dealing with any type of coding or any type of system that you don't know what it is and you don't know how to clean it or you don't have experience cleaning it, I encourage you to, um, to state, hey, at, or to ask, who is the manufacturer? Once you find out who the manufacturer is, go through the steps to do the research to find out what their cleaning process is, okay? So now even if it comes out to be a bleach and water solution, right? You did work that nobody else was willing to do. You and But you have to communicate this with the, with the homeowner, excuse me, or the property manager or who, whoever it is. You have to be able to communicate with them. Hey, well, normally I would just give you a price right here right now, however, um, since this is a boral roof and I'm not familiar with that roofing product, I'm going to reach out to the manufacturer and I'm going to see what they say is the proper process. Or, you know, I've had a lot of experience with this roofing system and 
we really tend to go by the manufacturer's recommendation. So I'm going to reach out to the re to the uh, manufacturer and just make sure that we're in line with their recommendations on how to clean this product. That way, everything is done correctly by the book to make sure that we maintain your warranty, that sort of stuff. You get into that explanation, and the next guy that comes up, oh yeah, yeah, I'm just going to spray it, you know, mix up there, and it's going to be good. You, that that doubt is now going to be in the mind of that that homeowner or that property manager. Um, uh, thank you. So it's not a coating we would see on a shingle roof. No, you would typically not see that on a shingle roof. Um, you would typically see that you shouldn't see it on a shingle roof because if they're putting a coating over the top of a of a shingle roof, they're you know most instances, which is probably 99.999% of the time, voiding the manufacturer's warranty because on an asphalt shingle roof, you're not supposed to put any kind of a coating on it. That's where I'm finding funny these new rejuvenate your shingle things that are coming out. So um, I, 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 I'm finding those funny because they void manufacturer's warranties. But then if you're putting a coating to rejuvenate the roof, the chances are it's beyond that anyhow. So no, you would not put that on a, on a shingled roof. Um, next question was, do you downstream on a brick home or would you have to use a three quarter mix? I'm not sure what the question is there, high rise. Um, if you want to redo that a little bit, do you downstream on bricks? I use booster pumps. So um, I would use a booster pump and, or would you have a, have to use a three to 4% mix? Um, typically if it's a house wash, I'm going to be using a one to one and a half percent mix. I don't downstream, I booster pump. So, um, that would be something else, but I'm not sure I answered your question because I'm not sure I understand it to be honest with you. Um, all right. The next one is, uh, nothing wrong with asking who the manufacturer is. Nobody in this business knows everything. Absolutely. Don't, don't hesitate to ask at all. Um, you can go up to, uh, uh, a drive it, right? You go up to a, a, a stucco building and you say, is that drive it? Because you may not know, right? There's a lot of different manufacturers out there that do these things, okay? If it's a metal roof, who's the coating manufacturer? There, there's virtually no way to tell on that, just going up with the naked eye, unless you're something, you know, really special like Scott. <laughs> nice to see you, bud. Um, anyhow, so it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with asking who the manufacturer is. And actually, I'll say it just the opposite. I'll say that you should ask who the manufacturer is if you're dealing with some sort of a specialty coating or um, something that is just out of the norm, something you don't normally see or don't normally clean. Uh, let me see what the next one was there. Um, you told me to do that on a bid once and they chose my bid because I was the only one who approached it with caution. I wish I knew who that Facebook user was. Absolutely. Um, I'm glad to hear that. So here's here's proof positive right here. Um, you told me to do that on a bid once and they chose me because I was the only one who approached it with caution, professionalism, saying, hey, I, you know, there's no way to know and, and approaching it the right way. I'm so happy to hear that. Scott says, no, you don't. You're retired. Meaning I don't spray squat. You're right, Scott. Uh, let's see. Um, you answered the question right. I was referring to a house wash. Appreciate it, High Rise. That's good to know. Uh, let's see. And then Scott, last one again. Dougie, do Dougie doesn't wash anymore. Muskrat. <laughs> oh, man. I don't even want to talk about that kind of stuff. Uh, say he doesn't know anything he is doing. I've never known what I was doing. I, I've never once ever, ever, ever known what I was doing, Scott. You know that. Anyhow, uh, I'm going to make it an early one. Um, I appreciate y'all. Uh, if there's any questions here real quick, I'll hang on for about another 30 seconds, and then I'm out of here, going to go spend some time with my lovely, lovely wife, go sit on the couch maybe, and just enjoy the retirement life that uh, – Scott is kind of making fun of me about. Scott landed a really nice job, I got to tell you. He's, uh, can I tell you all something? Okay, Scott, plug your ears for a second. Plug your ears. You got your ears plugged? Scott's lucky, man. He's just flat lucky. He landed this job with this, um, what is it, some fish farm or something like that. He just got lucky. Y'all know how I feel about lucky, right? The only way, the only way you get lucky is by getting off your butt and doing something, right? So um, I don't, I'm not, 
I believe in luck. Don't get me wrong, especially at the poker table. Every now and then you got to get lucky. But you have to create your own luck a lot of times. And I think Scott does. I don't want to talk nice about Scott. I just I don't. I don't, I don't want to do that. So I'm going I'm to leave that one alone. Anyhow, um, Scott's done done a lot of stuff, and, and uh, he's he's got a good thing going on with a uh, little fish farm that he's cleaning. I'm, I'm happy for him. Um, and he says, I just act like I know something, but we all know you don't, Scott. We know it. We know it. We know it. Facebook user says, go to bed. And I think that is my key, my clue to get the heck on out of here. Maybe go spend a little bit of couch time with the wife before we call it a day. And uh, it's been great. A uh, couple more things just real, real quick. And that is, um, don't forget about the huge convention. We should have a good announcement coming out. I thought we would have that announcement today. Uh, we don't. Uh, so hopefully we'll come out with that announcement to Molly. Um, and then also um, some stuff with Spray Wash Pro that's going on behind the scenes. Uh, should be an announcement here within the next two weeks. Hopefully, hopefully it's going to work out. Two more weeks, we'll get it. Um, I don't think we're going to be 100% ready when we launch the, uh, the, the, the online classes, but we should have at least five classes ready to go. Um, one of them is going to be government sales. Um, we're trying to, we're working diligently um, on the, the plant and property to make a really big plant and property. We're also working on a uh, roof cleaning class. We're working on, let me see if I can jump over and see what it says. Um, so the asphalt roof cleaning class, um, we're doing a, uh, how to create and sell with packages, um, how to bid and sell residential jobs, the plant and property protection, um, cashing in on government sales. Ray has been working very hard on that one. And then also um, new hire training. We're going to be working on some uh, new hire training. So some some things that you can just use to, to uh, help guide your new hires uh, into your job. So um, yes, Scott, I'm going to get off my butt and I'm going to finish them, but there are other things that are going on in life, that kind of thing. So I'm trying to get rid of that now. I appreciate y'all for listening to me. Doug Gord, Dougie Dew, Spray Wash Academy, Spray Wash Pro. I'm out of here. I appreciate y'all. Thank you.